already 9 past 10. A very good morning to all of you, myself Professor Navid Akbar from Malana Gupta Ahmed Lodhi Technical Campus. In last class we have seen that test on the concrete because to know the strength of your concrete the test must be done on the concrete and there are uh, two types of test generally in broad sense if we classify destructive test and and non destructive test in destructive test the commonly used tests are compression compression strain test flexural strain test and splitting tensile test this one is the compressive test and these two are the indirect direct tensile test If all of you write your roll number before your name, then uh, it is easy for me to mark the attendance. And in uh, second type, the non-destructive test, the, there are many non-destructive tests evolved nowadays. The few are very common from uh, decades it is followed, that is rebound hammer and the ultrasonic pulse velocity. Full out test and the impact echo test is carried out on the piles also. So, that are non destructive, there is, there is no destruction on the concrete. Also, if the cube test is not satisfied, then the destructive test we are taking core from the core sample from the slab beam or the column or any structural member if we have doubt and the cube is strain that 28 days is not satisfying then we are going for the core test and other no destructive test may be reborn locator and many tests are available we have seen yesterday the test destructive test is carried on the cylindrical, cylindrical cubical uh, specimen and the machine use are the compression testing machine and also one uh, test we have seen is carried out by the on the hydraulic surface uh, on the pipe you can see the attachments are there to know the deflection and the lower applied at the top you can see and this is the destruction caused on the pipe so this are the destructive test when there is crushing of the Number. Then we have seen the specimen used in a cylindrical beam test can be used for the to find out the compression on test and also we see in the end condition and capping conditions are uh, impacting or affecting the uh, test on uh, mini axial compression and biaxial compression and we have also seen that the higher the value of poison ratio to the model of elasticity induces higher lateral movement because uh, you know that the strength of concrete in compression is very large and in mini axial compression and bio axial compression of you see due to the lateral movement our poisonous effect of uh, uh, the sides open there is no stress or no application of force or pressure from there the uh, material escape or crust and the parallel lines are come over that surfaces so you can see that load is applied in universal testing the crushing of the uh, 
uh, specimen will be from the two other directions where load is now applied that is the lateral dimension and the, this is expansion because there is no such pressure available that's why they are expanding in that direction in uniaxial and biaxial compression and then failure uh, how it, it is of course you have seen it through the photograph non exclusive exclusive and the ideal failure for the tube is clinical specimen also we have seen the uh, splenic specimen uh, failure yesterday and then we also seen the effect of higher uh, height to diameter ratio as the height to diameter ratio is large the strength is good if it is are uh, is a uh, high higher height to diameter ratio the strength uh, less uh, the strength will be large when we increase the strength uh, uh, decreasing then uh, due to the x by d ratio generally for cubical cylindrical specimen we are considering as the ideal to know the compressive strength of the specimen uh, then with reference to that for another size of the specimen the stm the british code and the degree of angular standard they are given the correction factors if you are height to depth ratio or height to diameter ratio is different so long cracked fracture earlier in a larger specimen one is likely to find a longer crack but lower strength result so experimental data for cylindrical exhibit reduction in the strength compared to the cubical specimen definitely similar result for cube are also observed so if the size of cubes are different then their relative strength also different that also we have seen yesterday and then uh, loading rate also affect the strength of your uh, test uh, concrete uh, if the loading rate is high you will get the higher strength so these we have seen yesterday class and now further we will uh, move uh, to the towards the today's lecture the same we will continue with the destructive testing of concrete but here the test is the tensile test the clear is the test is the tensile test at the end of the lecture you are able to understand the indirect test on the concrete and the direct test on the concrete direct and indirect test what is different between that you will come to know flexural test on the concrete and the splitting tensile test on the concrete so generally uh, flexural test or splitting test time test we are performing we are considering as the indirect test and test on the concrete because for the direct tension test uh, there may be the problem of holding of the specimen uh, in the compression testing machine or the in the in the universal testing machine because in compression testing machine only compression we can done but in universal testing machine we can also done the compressed uh, tensile but the problem is with the direct tension test that the holding of the specimen into the uh, setup so generally for flexural test the beam is used that this beam mode we can see that is 150 by 150 by by 700 mm size and generally for splitting tensile test we are using this uh, uh, specimen of cylindrical specimen we can say and for cube different size 150 by 150 by 150 and 100 by 100 by 100 in all you can see in the figure so these are the uh, destructive testing carried on these modes uh, you can see why we need uh, the, to know the tensile strength of concrete 
the concrete is exploited so as a relay least on its tensile strain. However, tensile strain is important for shrinkage, shear, differential movement, etc. that can result in crackings. So generally, here, here there is tension on the surface on that side the cracks are developed. To know that shrinkage, shear and differential movement crack, the tensile strength of concrete is very important. Also the water draining structures, so dams and earthquake excitation payment slab and the air field runway are designed on the basis of either direct or flexural tensile strain. The tensile strain need to, to be known and can be related with the compressive strain. For example, uh, we have seen the shrinkage cracks, shear cracks or differential movement. Also, uh, we need to for sustain structures, uh, uh, the design tensile strain of concrete we should know. And we have discussed that water tank, dams, pavement, airport runway, and many structures they required uh, cracking mostly they are uh, due to bending due to flexural and due to continuous impact of uh, water, hydraulic pressures, etc. In these uh, situations, we are going for. Uh, also, to avoid the leakage in the hydraulic structures, we going going for uh, uh, to know the tensile strength of your uh, concrete. So, we have seen the uh, in the previous class in uniaxial bending, the pressure or load is applied from only one axis. So we know that we have three axis of reference x y and z and now in three dimension you see says the x y and y and n z okay so these three axes you can know so if you are applying the load to the specimen from only one direction from top and bottom then this is termed as uniaxial uh, compression okay so generally machine available in our laboratories are also they are uniaxial testing machine in some laboratories that triaxial testing machine are also available and for Ideal compression test we need the triaxial testing machine. So you in uniaxial testing machine generally you can see that the failure of the tube is not uh, occur due to the compression. It is the it is due to the poison effect or the lateral state of the material and that leads to the weaken the bonding between the paste and the aggregate. And that's why the failure occur or crushing occur. So that is also you can see that that is also due to the failure due to the tensions. Yeah. Because in these directions, you can see in the cube. If you, I will draw the cube, you see the cubical specimen. Because your load applying only to one direction on a two faces of your cube, other this face and this space are open okay these spaces are open so that the movement or lateral movement are possible from this direction and that uh, crushing is done and that due, uh, that uh, due to that the uh, your sample fail so in compression testing also you can say that uh, that uh, the failure is not due to uh, uh, compression fully it is a, due to the lateral effect and the can say that the indirect tension of the in the member. If you come to the direct tensile strain, uh, to know the direct tensile strain, it is very difficult uh, 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 to 
chest because of the holding problem in the specimen. So in the direct tension method, uh, in the most uh, is the most accurate measuring the tensile response of the concrete. But the problem is uh, how to hold uh, the uh, grip the end of the specimen for the test. So many such uh, if this one you can see in the first the holding of the equi uh, equipment uh, from top to bottom to full pulling pulling the uh, sample. So if you pulling the sample, then only the tension will come on the, in the picture. Otherwise, you can't say that is a tension. So mostly what happen when this uh, direct test if you are doing the holding the uh, specimen like this the crushing failure occur before the tension failure at this places that is a problem uh, of the direct tension tear other methods are also applied you can see here by using the epoxy bond strain you can apply but still you can not say that the test will be performed accurately and the failure of uh, concrete uh, is uh, not uh, uh, predicted then to know that the failure is tension tension failure then the specimen is given some notch so that the failure will be uh, from that notch uh, point and the reason so that the failure is the tension failure so crushing of concrete at the grips may occur before the specimen actually fail in tension also as you seen above the gripping is provided at top and bottom of the specimen prismatic or the cylindrical fashion may be used for the best effect the smaller diameter should be used however this is restricted by maximum size of aggregate because uh, the size of aggregate depend which size of uh, the specimen you can use it depends on the nominal maximal maximum size of aggregate that is nsa alternate methodologies such as epoxy bonding to the platens or the provision of notch may be caused may be used to ensure the tensile cracking failure in the uh, specimen. Mr. Kakade, uh, try to join on time. Okay. Now, in that uh, uh, direct method we have seen, uh, generally uh, in a uh, in practice, we are using the indirect methods of uh, finding out the tensile strength of your concrete. There are two methods we are adopting. One is the splitting tensile strength of your concrete, and another one is the flexural strength of concrete. So we will see first uh, the flexural strength of your concrete. You can see this figure: uh, midpoint load and three-point load methods. You can see third point load two points are and two supports are there this is the third point load method and uh, this is the midpoint weight method to find the flexural strength of your concrete so generally the flexural strength of your concrete is performed on the beam specimen of size 150 by 150 by 700 mm and you can also uh, perform on the 100 by 100 by 500 mm specimen if your nominal maximum maximum size of aggregate is restricted and it is less than 20 mm also now there is two method to find out the flexural strength of your concrete one is the midpoint loading method and another one is 
third point loading method but midpoint loading method only central we are applying the load and you cannot say that that is uh, uh, the bending on the beam it may be due to shear uh, failure so that's why mostly we are adopting nowadays the third point loading method the advantage of the third point uh, loading method is uh, uh, the zone between the two loading points the zone between the two loading points these two loading points are there here and this look you can say that the bending is occur in this two loading points so this one is one loading point and this one is the another loading point so you can say that between the the bending is occur and the shear is zero to ensure that that is our uh, uh, so there is only bending moment here will be zero so that we are adopting that way okay now we will uh, see the Midpoint loading method that's at the center of the specimen. The total length between the support is uh, your L, and the load is applied at the midpoint from here, and that is at the midpoint that is L by 2 from each support, L by 2 from the each support. But in case of third point uh, method, you can see two supports are there and they are guided by the bars, these two supports and then the load is applied uh, by two roller support over the your beam sample. And the size of the specimen may be different for this first uh, you can say that uh, 150 by 150 by 70 200 mm or 15 by 15 by 70 centimeter this is a specimen in that case the distance between the each uh, uh, roller is kept L by 3 okay so this is 20 this is 20 and so and this is 20 for the uh, specimen of size uh, 15 by 15 by 70 centimeter and if you are going for the nominal maximum size of 10 20 uh, mm then you can make a mold the mold of 10 by 10 by 50 centimeter or 100 by 100 by 1 500 mm in that case the l by d is 13.3 centimeter okay so this is the arrangement of your third point loading method to know the flexural strength of your concrete this attachment you can see on the machine directly these are the supports and the distance between the supports is the 600 mm okay and then the distance between the loading is uh, as I say L by 3 200 by 200 by 200 mm this is arrangement this arrangement many times you can see here and l is equal to d by 3 third point loading method d d d d is nothing but l is equal to 3d is based on the sample size you can divide the uh, uh, d and you continue as for the specimen size and you can make such arrangement for testing of your 
third point loading method you know the flexor resistance of your concrete now the flexor strength of the specimen uh, after testing after applying a load here the failure may be occur and after the failure uh, you can record the load and if you know the load you know the length of the specimen you know, you know the width of the specimen you know the depth of the specimen then the modulus of rupture at b it is also called as modulus of rupture at b is find out t that is load into l the distance on the b into d that is local uh, dimension and depth of the beam when we use this formula if the value of a a what is a a is if you will uh, say that this is your uh, your specimen okay of uh, 700 mm okay but our roller is uh, at this distance then the crack or failure is occur from here so from this failure surface we find this is the failure surface the distance between the nearest support to the failure surface is known as the value of a magnicum what is the time is join on time so this you can see uh, uh, that the value of a and based on that value of a uh, you have to use the formula when the a is greater than 20 cm for 15 cm specimen that is the specimen of 15 by 15 by 70 as told earlier in this specimen the value of a is greater than 20 cm and for the 10 cm specimen that is 100 10 by 10 by 50 cm in that case the, the value of a is greater than 30.3 cm you have to use this formula to find out the modulus of rupture of the your beam or you can say the flexural strength of your beam where the p is the applied uh, the maximum or uh, failure load l is the length of sample b is the width of the sample and d is the depth of your sample but if your failure uh, of this edge the value of a here we are seeing the value of a is nothing but the failure surface to the nearest support that is the value of a at the center line so the flexural strength of a specimen uh, generally expressed in the modulus of rupture then when the value of a is less than the value of a is sorry the value of a is less than 20 cm but greater than 70 cm in case of which type of specimen that is uh, 15 by 15 by 70 cm specimen if this is the value in that case you have to use this formula to calculate the uh, flexural strength of your beam specimen otherwise if your value of uh, uh, sorry a is greater than uh, or less than to, uh, 17 cm less than 17 cm for the 15 cm specimen and a is less than 13.3 cm on uh, uh, sorry 11 11 cm value of less than a is less than 11 cm 
then the sample will be discarded for the 10 by 10 by 50 centimeter sample specimen so this formula if the value of u for the uh, 100 or 10 centimeter specimen is less than 13.3 centimeter and greater than 11 centimeter then you can say the value of a is in between then then this formula is used for the 10 centimeter specimen to calculate the flexural strength of your beam similarly you can see here uh, what is the b is the measure width in centimeter of the specimen d is the measure depth in centimeter of the specimen at the point of failure and l is the length in centimeter of the specimen on which the specimen is supported and the center center this distance between the support is the l and uh, p is the maximum load in kg or in kilonewton is applied to the specimen that should be recorded and final but if the value of a is less than 17 centimeter for 15 centimeter specimen and for 10 centimeter specimen and the value of a is less than 11 centimeter for a 10 centimeter specimen the result of test will be not considered or it may be discarded so that specimen is not considered and it will be discarded so that should be kept in the mind while finding out the flexural strength the value of a is very important and the value of a you can find equal to the distance between the line of fracture where is this is the line of fracture and the nearer support this is the nearer support left side here this right side nearer support then you find there and and the formula you can use uh, as uh, written here okay as per the values of a to know the flexural strength of your concrete so this is the uh, this way you can test the indirect method to know the tensile strength of your concrete tensile strength generally is coming between 11 to 12 uh, percent of your compression strain, uh, strain generally now second indirect method of tensile strength of concrete is uh, uh, done on the cylindrical specimen of size 150 by 300 mm height 150 diameter to the 300 mm height and this state is called as splitting tensile test and for 100 by 200 specimen the diameter is 100 mm and 200 mm is height for the nominal maximum size aggregate less than 20 mm the cylindrical splitting uh, test is also known as uh, brazilian test sometimes because it is a uh, first time developed in the brazil in 1943 uh, and, uh, and uh, about the same time this was also independently developed in the japan also so generally you can see this psa is uh, uh, done from 1943 the many from the many decades say this is uh, uh, used and after few days you can say the, the centuries it is using the attachment you can see uh, this is the cylindrical specimen Generally, it is done on the cylindrical specimen. You can see the cylindrical specimen is uh, placed horizontally between the loading surface, you know? and it is supported by the. You can see the plywood here, here, here plywood, and here also you can see the plywood, you know? and this is the support because just holding of the specimen. Okay, so this is the specimen you can see. Okay horizontally put between the loading surfaces so if you see from the front you, you will look like that 
the supplementary steel bar is uh, provided to apply the load at the center of the uh, cylindrical specimen horizontally close between the loading surfaces then load is applied and the you can see the stress pattern the load is applied here you can see this is rope that is applied from top and bottom uh, equal loads and the tension uh, uh, the compression at the middle portion only you can say but other this other than this portion maximum there is a tension only up to this uh, surface you can see the pattern the compression is there otherwise all this uh, you can say they are feeling the tension on the surface the so that this is attachment and the stress is uh, uh, generally pi ld upon 2p okay so stress into pi, stress is the pi ld upon 2p and this is the express diagram you can see how it is the distribution to the center then third point then the sixth point and then uh, you can say beyond that the small very small compression is there on the specimen this is the distribution of the stress is diagram you can see then after testing applying the load the uh, the, the specimen uh, uh, breaks into two halves you know, the specimen you can say it will breaks into the two holes like this like this the breaking will be done let's see there you go. like this the specimen break up at the center hmm? so this result in the development of tensile stress along the central diameter in the lateral direction except compression very close to the loading point so compression is only at the loading point we are applying the load so this surface only you will feel some compression if you see here only the near this surface only you will see, uh, see the compression the due to the poison effect or lateral effect the all specimen are feeling a tension so that tension applied indirectly that's why these methods are uh, called as the uh, indirect method of tensile test when these stresses exceed the tensile capacity of your concrete the specimen simply splits into two halves as you can see here generally it makes two halves and the resultant tensile strain is calculated using this formula 2 p pi ld in newton per mm square or in mega pascal this formula is used to find out the splitting tensile strength of your uh, concrete so these are the destructive tests uh, are carried out uh, uh, direct method you have seen but there is problem of gripping and holding of the specimen and indirect method there are two methods we have seen destructive method that is the splitting tensile test and the uh, flexural test where in this splitting tensile test P is the compression load on the cylinder L is the length of the cylinder and D is the diameter so this word you can say that is L length of the and the diameter of the cylinder you can say this is this D. Okay, so this is a, a, the test setup of the splitting tensile strain. Now we can see the small videos how the splitting tensile strain test uh, is performed or flexural strain test is performed. You can watch and uh, then we will proceed further or we will stop for, for, for today's lecture. So I will run the video to get
The many such videos on destructive and non-destructive testing is available on the internet also. So you can make a reference and you can use that to learn. So this uh, can see that lecture is still test we are uh, performing on the universal testing machine using direct method you know as i told you the test is laid on the beam of size 150 by 150 by 100 mm another size the normal maximum size of 20 mm aggregate you can find out either the central point loading or the two point loading the, the machine is used for the test is, is the universal testing machine the, the diameter of the roller Provided are the six hundred millimeter, one hundred fifty mm millimeter specimen size, hundred mm specimen size. This distance is four hundred mm. For Third point loading we can uh, be, uh, apply by two rulers. The beam mold is filled in three layers and tamping each layer by 25 below during the casting of the beam. In the water, the, you have to put the specimen for curing at the temperature of or approximately 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, depending on the test age, 7, 14 or 28 days, you have to put into the water for the curing. After curing and drying the, sir, uh, the specimen, it is placed under the loading. This is the road of loading because made of row, rate of loading also affects the strength of the specimen that's why it is kept as per the specimen size the load at, at, at the cylinder or the specimen fails is steady this is the value a it is very important line of fracture to the nearest support you have to know I have told you with 200 mm for 50 mm, 150 mm specimen, if the value is greater than 200 mm, then this formula is used to find out the selection, strength or modulus of rupture of the concrete that is FD. If A is in between 20 centimeter and greater than 17 centimeter and for 10 centimeter specimen the, the value of a is less than 13.3 centimeter or 1 11 centimeter for 10 centimeter specimen in this formula is used that is fd is equal to qpa divided by dd square and that is called as the modulus of rupture and it is calculated by equation this already explained to you now we will see the this test we have seen and then we will see the test uh, uh, splitting, splitting chain by test uh, how you can perform on the cylindrical specimen
दस प्रेसिडेंट साहिब में भी वन फिफ्टी एम एम डायमीटर टू रॉड थ्री हंड्रेड Stent test and concave is also performed on the universal testing machine or compression testing machine. You have to put the specimen like this. By applying the force on the horizontal sensor, the cylindrical specimen of size one fifty mm by height is three hundred mm. same we are using to find out the compression testing machine that is the benefit of this in four layer we have to fill the concrete and the mold is removed after one day and it is placed into the curing tank At a temperature of twenty-seven plus two degrees Celsius, you have to draw the line to the center of the specimen. Here we have to put. at a specimen for the loading surfaces between the loading surfaces the specimen will be placed longitudinally in the machine to hold the specimen we are putting the plywood over top you can also use the supplementary bars and the When you are applying the load at the rate of one point two to two point four MPa per minute, and then the finally the failure load is uh, recorded, and then the spirit tension value strain is calculated using this formula, two P upon pi dl. Here P is the load specimen press, and the uh, so this uh, uh, today we will completed our uh, this splitting uh, destructive testing on the specimen so today we have seen and completed the destructive testing of uh, the concrete or you may say the tensile test and two major destructive tests uh, nowadays are carried out that is flexural strain test and the Uh, splitting tensile strain test of concrete. So we will uh, stop today, and after that, our lecture is completed, and you are not considered for today lectures. So you should uh, join on time. I am admitted you, but that will not be counted. So thank you for joining for today's lecture. You have seen the destructive test on the concrete. Flexural test and the split tensile to strain test, and very informative lecture you can be uh, find out. And I will share this uh, uh, presentation or the video lecture on uh, YouTube also. You can go through that and be benefited. Thank you for joining lecture today. We will stop here.